That's when the music professors would say, you cannot do this, it is against the rules. Rules. Music theory is full of them. And they are useful. They give us a basic framework for understanding and creating music. However, I think they should be treated as guidelines and not as laws. Often, the most interesting things happen when artists break the rules. So in this video, I'd like to show you some piano voicings that, despite being illegal from a traditional perspective, work really well. If you're looking to play some rich, crunchy jazz chords, look no further. Let's get into some harmonic trouble, shall we? When you study jazz, the professors will tell you that you should never use a natural and an altered version of the same extension in the same voicing. For example, don't use a natural 9 and a sharp 9, or a 13 and a flat 13 together. And traditionally, it's true that most jazz arranging avoids those clashes. So if you want to stay in the safe zone, sure. However, if you want to live a little, you can make almost any dissonance work, especially if you resolve it convincingly. Here's a typical voicing for an altered C dominant chord. It's got the guide tones 3 and 7 at the bottom, then sharp 9 and flat 13. If I wanted to add another note at the top, the most common choices would be either the root like this or the flat 9 like this. And they both sound great. But what if I added this note? That's when the music professors would say, you cannot do this, it is against the rules. To which I say, watch me. And do it anyway. My voicing now contains both a sharp 9 and a natural 9. I can think of it as having two parts, the guide tones in my left hand, which form a tritone, and this quartal shape in my right hand, consisting of a perfect fourth and an augmented fourth. Dissonant? Very much so. Awesome nonetheless? I think so. See, a big part of making dissonance work is in how you resolve it. Check this out. The most common resolution of a C7 chord is to an F chord. If I resolve my illegal voicing to this F major 7 voicing, it sounds pretty convincing. Notice that all the notes resolve stepwise. except for this one, which stays in place. Usually, the less movement between adjacent voicings, the better the transition sounds. Now, check this out. Playing the 13 instead of the flat 13 in my illegal voicing gives me a cool variation. Flat 13, 13. My right hand shape now consists of an augmented fourth first and then a perfect fourth. Another thing I can do is take either of my right hand shapes and move them down a half step. Now, instead of the crime of using both sharp 9 and natural 9 in my voicing, I'm committing the closely related crime of using both natural 9 and flat 9. And once again, if I resolve convincingly to F major or minor, I've created an awesome pattern of dissonance and consonance, which is what music is all about, an intricate dance between the two. And lastly, I can now apply the whole idea to a different set of voicings by flipping the guide tones. Instead of starting with a C7 chord that has the third at the bottom, this is often called an A voicing, I'll start with the seventh at the bottom, this would then be called a B voicing. So here I got my guide tones in my left hand, seven and three, and in my right hand I'll play 13, nine and flat 13. And once again, I'm in violation of paragraph 14-3 of the music theory penal code, by using both a 13 and a flat 13. 
And once again, I don't care. It sounds good to me and that's all I need. Here's a nice resolution of this voicing to an F major 7 chord. I can also use sharp 9 instead of 9 right here and resolve it like so, this time to an F minor chord. And as we did with the A voicing earlier, here's the right hand portion of my C7 chord moved down a half step. The violation in this case being that I have both a 5 and a sharp 5 in my chord. One thing I do want to stress is that there's a right way and there's a wrong way to break the rules. The right way is to do it as a deliberate artistic choice, as part of your creative exploration. The wrong way is doing it out of ignorance or laziness. It's a bit of a cliche to say that you have to learn the rules first before you can break them, but I think there's a lot of truth to it. So make sure you break the law for the right reasons. Like Robin Hood. And there you have it. I hope this inspired you to go find your own favorite rules to break. In the immortal words of In Vogue, free your mind and the rest will follow. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.